Hi, Beth here, and I'm going to show you how to make this Stitch and Star pillow. It's a great skill builder because you get to work on piecing, quilting, binding, and then you have a lovely decoration for your sewing space. So first you'll want to cut out all your pieces according to the cutting instructions. Now this one does have a lot of different size squares, so I like to organize them with a little craft clip and a little just scrap piece of paper just indicating what size each of the items are so I don't get those mixed up. So first we're going to make some triangle squares. So we're layering our 3 and 1 8 inch squares right sides together with the lighter one on top because we're going to mark that. We're going to mark a line from the corner to the corner and if you don't want that to shift you can put a piece of sandpaper under that helps your fabric from stretching. So we're going to sew a quarter inch on either side of this marked line. We've sewn a quarter inch away from the drawn line on each side and now we're going to cut on that drawn line to make our two triangle squares. So you'll take your triangle squares and lay those out with your two and three quarter inch light print squares here and you'll make four of these total and we'll assemble these. Now we'll move on to making the flying geese units. So we're going to take our dark print and mark a diagonal line on the backs of those. With this dark fabric, it is kind of tough, so you can use a white marking pencil or you can use Taylor's chalk, anything like that that you can see that line have that show up on the back. Next, we'll take our two and three quarter by five ivory rectangles and place those face up, and then we are layering one of our squares and make sure the diagonal line is going in towards the center of that rectangle. Now we'll sew on that marked line, and I find it is easier to start on the side of the rectangle rather than the point. It helps feed that through easier. Next we'll trim and leave a quarter inch seam allowance. Next we'll add the other side in the same way. So layer your square, again making sure that line is pointing towards the center of your rectangle and then sew along that line. So you'll make eight total of those flying geese units. Four of them we're going to add a few more pieces to to make a side unit. So we're taking our small triangles and we're going to sew those onto either side of our flying geese. Now we're sewing the medium triangle to the bottom of the unit. Now we'll take two of our large dark print triangles and we'll add those on either side of the triangle to make a larger flying geese unit. We got this really cute panel from Northcott. It's called Stonehenge A Stitch in Time. And these were the perfect size for the center of our pillow. So we've assembled the center blockets with our four flying geese units and then four solid squares around our little fussy cut panel piece. So now we're ready to assemble the center of our pillow. So we've got our center and then our four side pieces and then our four corner pieces. And we will assemble those in rows. So to make this project go a little bit faster and to use more of this cute panel from Northcott, we decided to use part of that for the border instead of piecing it. And then we're assembling that with our corner squares and that will be the top of our pillow. So we finished adding the borders to our piece top and I've layered this with batting and our backing fabric. You can use muslin too. And then I've used a spray baste to baste all the layers together. Next, we'll prep our machine for quilting. So I have added the walking foot to the machine. This just helps all the layers feed through evenly. And I'm going to add the extension table. That gives us a little more room to support our project as we're working on it. So you take your accessory tray off, and then you can just slide on the extension table. So that gives us a lot more room to work with 
and it will just help your project not pull as much off the table. I'm newer to quilting, so I do like to do a little marking before I get started. I did find this really fun tool in the Fashion Starter Kit from Eversone. It's a crease marking tool, so you can just pull that along your ruler and it leaves a crease for you to follow. I finished quilting the front of the pillow and now we just need to trim it to size. Next we'll make the envelope back for the pillow. So we've got our two backing pieces and we'll take it over to the ironing board and you'll press a quarter inch and then press another quarter inch. And I like to use a little seam guide like this. Now we'll stitch this down. So we've sewn both our backing pieces and now we're layering our pillow together. So we are putting our pillow front face down on the table and then we've got our two backing pieces and those are face up. And make sure your hemmed edge is on the inside. That's our overlap for our envelope back. And then just line up all the edges and we're going to sew. We're sewing with a scant quarter inch around the entire pillow. And now we'll bind it to complete the pillow. So we'll sew the binding onto the front and then wrap it around to the back and hand stitch. So we've stuffed it with a 24 inch pillow form and it's ready to go. It's so cute and would make the perfect decoration for your sewing space.